let's um we are going to now begin talking about the four gospels. Sada ćemo početi govoriti o četiri evanđelja. First I'm going to tell you where we are going with this. Prvo ću vam reći što je naš cilj, prema kojem idemo. Um, and then we're going to go there. A onda ćemo krenuti tamo. <laughs> okay. Um, the goal of this is, is that you be able to, will be able to um, read the four gospels with a lot more understanding on your own than you did before. Jest da biste sami mogli čitati evanđelja sa puno više razumijevanja nego što ste mogli to činiti do sada. Yeah, it's, the goal is not that you we will tell you everything you have to know about the gospels. Cilj nije da vam kažemo sve što biste trebali znati u evanđeljima. But to help you have the tools to do under, some understanding on your own. Nego da vam pomognemo da vam damo neke alate da biste mogli sami razumijeti. What I'm going to be talking about is first of all the some of the background information that will help you understand the gospel. And also then I'm going to talk about how to understand Jesus. Because I we I I think you probably agree with me. Jer mislim da se vjerojatno slažete sa mnom. That Jesus is not always the easiest to understand. Da Isusa nije uvijek jednostavno razumjeti. Some of the stories he told and things are are hard to really no what did he is he getting at? Neke priče koje je rekao, neke stvari koje go, o kojima je govorio, pitamo se pa što je htio time reći. But um, if you understand some basic things about his method of teaching and his basic message, he is then everything becomes clearer. Ali ako razumijete neke njegove metode, načine njegovog poučavanja, onda vam stvari postanu jasnije. And well, this will continue into tomorrow. To ćemo nastaviti i sutra. And then I, Ivan will take over. A onda će Ivan preuzeti. And he's going to focus on, he's going to go through the book of Mark and the book of John. A on će pro, uh, nam govoriti o evanđelju po Marku i Ivanu. And so then you'll get a more concrete, specific look at a couple of the books. So between these two approaches, we think it will really will help you. Now first, we're just going to talk, I'm going to talk about just the background information. What was the world like when Jesus was walking around in it. Kakav je svijet bio kada je Isus hodao u ovom po ovom svijetu? Well, you know, Jesus lived in in uh, what is today Israel. Isus je živio u onome što danas nazivamo država Izrael. Um, Israel had been its own kingdom. Izrael je nekada bio svoje vlastito kraljevstvo, samostalno kraljevstvo. And that's in the Old Testament. A to je bilo u vrijeme Starog zavjeta. But they were disobedient to God. Ali Izrael je bio neposlušan Bogu. Um, and not just a little bit. I to ne samo malo. But they had been they had disobeyed the Lord for centuries. Nego je bio neposlušan Gospodinu ti, eh, stoljećima. And so he sent enemies who destroyed their kingdom and took them into exile in another land. I onda je Gospodin poslao neprijatelja da uništi njihovo kraljevstvo i da ih njih pošalje u izbjeglištvo. And he told them that what's going to happen when their exile is over a onda im je rekao da nakon što prođe njihovo vrijeme izgona it's going to be um, they're going to return and everything is going to be fine da će se oni vratiti da će sve biti u redu the, all these nations will be coming to them bringing bringing treasure to them and, and people will they'll be completely safe i da će biti potpuno sigurno i da će sve te nacije njima donositi blaga i tako. They'll never need to be afraid, they'll never be hungry. Da neće trebati se više bojati, da neće biti gladni. The world will be a wonderful place. Da će svijet biti jedno prekrasno mjesto. But God did this, uh, said this on the assumption or, or based on ali Bog je to učinio uz pretpostavku ili temeljeći to na uh, the, the idea that Israel would would repent with their whole heart and return and turn to the Lord. Na potom pretpostavkom da se Izrael iz cijelog srca obrati Gospodinu. And in God said in the book of Jeremiah, i Bog je rekao u Jeremiji, that this promise is is based on 
your response. Da je to obećanje da se ono temelji na njihovom odazivu kako će reagirati. And and we read that at the end of their years in exile. I čitamo da na kraju tog vremena izgranstva when the prophet Daniel prayed and asked the Lord to send them back to the land, he admitted in the prayer that Israel had not repented. And so what happened was they did not get returned to the land in that glorious way that they had been promised. They returned to the they returned to the land but did not have their own king. They, they were want, they were expecting a descendant of David to rule them. And God said, I have not forgotten David. Bog je rekao, nisam zaboravio Davida. I will restore David, David's descendant to rule you. Obnovit ću Davidovog potomka da vlada nad vama. But not yet. Ali ne još. You have to wait longer. Tračete čekati još, još duže vremena. And so there were about 400 years where Israel was ruled mostly by other nations. I tako je prošlo 400 godina za, i za to vrijeme je Izraelom vladale su uglavnom druge nacije, drugi narodi. And when the Gospels begin, they are ruled by a man named King Herod. Now, Herod is the king of Israel, but he wasn't even a Jew. He was an, we would call an Edomite. <laughs> um, and so everybody in Israel knew that Herod being their king was not God's, a sign of God's blessing. I svi u Izraelu znali su da to što je Herod kralj nije znak Božjeg blagoslova. And in fact he was such a terrible person that it could, it's just not a, not a blessing to be ruled by him. I zapravo on je bio tako grozna osoba da uopće nije bilo blagoslov biti po njegovom vlašću. In fact a, um, a Roman uh, emperor I believe or yeah. Zapravo rimski car. Or, or he was a very famous Roman. Ili po, jedan poznati rimski. I, I've forgotten who which one. Zaboravio sam koji od njih. He, he said, I would rather be Herod's dog than Herod's son. <laughs> Rekao je da bi radije bio Herodov pas nego Herodov sin. Well, um, this is the Herod that was ruling Israel when the wise men came. He's the Herod the wise men came to and asked about where the Messiah was going to be born. To je taj Herod kojem su došli mudraci s istoka i pitali ga gdje, gdje, gdje se rodio Mesija. Who then went and had all the boys in Bethlehem massacred. Koji je nakon toga masakrirao sve dječake u Bethlehemu. Well, this, this Herod died. Taj Herod je umro. And he had been ruling sort of underneath the Romans. I vladao je na neki način pod rimskom vlašću. I mean, the, the Romans were allowing him to rule. Dakle, rimljani su njemu dozvoljavali da vlada. Well, after he died, I nakon što je umro, they broke up his kingdom. Razdijelili su njegovo kraljestvo. So when we read in the Gospels, the, the, there are, Jesus is actually moving through several different political units. Dakle, dok čitamo evanđelja, vidimo kako se Isus giba kreće kroz nekoliko različitih političkih jedinica. What they did was they took Jerusalem and the core of Israel. Dakle, uzeli su Jeruzalem kao to jedno središte Izraela. And made that a Roman imperial province. I to su učinili jednom carskom provincijom. And it was ruled directly by a representative of the emperor. Kojem je vladao izravno predstavnik cara. And the other bits, like Galilee and these other lands around, were given to the sons of Herod. Almost all of these guys are named Herod, by the way. I mean, this is, tells you something about the man that, that he names all his children the same name after himself. Nešto vam govori o tom čovjeku kada sve svoje sinove nazove po sebi. That's why there is three or four of them in the Bible. Zato vidimo u Bibliji tri ili četiri ta Heroda. Yeah, um, the Herod that killed John the Baptist was not the Herod, the same Herod that, you know, killed the children. Yeah, onaj Herod koji je dao ubiti Ivana Krstitelja nije isti Herod koji je dao masakrirati djecu. Okay, well, 
what happened when in these four these four hundred years before godina prije, or uh, yeah before Jesus prije Isusa, um, people have asked the question why did God wait so long ljudi su postavili pitanje zašto je Bog čekao tako dugo because in the New Testament it says in the fullness of time Jesus came jer u Novom Zavjetu kaže da je Isus došao u punini vremena. So, at the right time. Dakle, u pravom trenutku. So, why was this the right time? Zašto je onda to bio pravi trenutak? And, tradition, tri- typically we will hear, well, the Roman Empire existed and it had roads and it was safe and it was uh, easy for the gospel to spread. Obično čujemo objašnjenje da se kaže bilo je tu rimsko carstvo, postojale su ceste, bila je sigurnost. I lako se onda moglo širiti evanđelje. And, and that's true. I to je istina. But actually, even the Persian Empire had roads and was safe and had lots of trade and also... The... Ali i Persijsko carstvo isto tako je malo ceste, imalo je tu sigurnost i trgovinu i sve ostalo. And the Greek empires. I Grčka carstva. Same thing. Isto tako. Um, what, what happened, the reason it was the fullness of time is what God had done in the nation of Israel. A punina vremena je zapravo bila po tome, po onome što je Bog učinio u naciji Izraelu. That experience of waiting for hundreds of years. To iskustvo iščekivanja kroz stoljeća. Had, had caused Israel to actually repent of idolatry. Uzrokovala je to da se Izrael stvarno obrati od idolopoklonstva. They, they did no longer, they no longer had a problem with worshiping idols like they did in the Old Testament. Više nisu imali problema sa štovanjem idola kao što su imali u vrijeme Starog Zavjeta. And they developed, they, they had really gotten firm in their minds and hearts the idea that a Messiah was going to come. I u svojim srcima i umovima imali su tu snažnu ideju da će Mesija doći. That God was going to send somebody that would save them. Da će Bog poslati nekoga tko će ih spasiti. They are going to do it themselves. Uh, they, they will not do it themselves. To neće učiniti oni sami. The, but the Messiah would come and bring the kingdom of God. Nego doći će Mesija i donijeti Bože kraljevstvo. And this, this idea of the Messiah had become so it was very strong. I ta ideja o Mesi bila je jako postala je vrlo snažna. Uh, which is one reason why Jesus did not go around and say I'm the Messiah, I'm the Messiah. Što je razlog zašto Isus nije okolo hodao i govorio ja sam Mesija, ja sam Mesija. Because people's idea of what Messiah meant was so strong. Jer uh, ljudi su imali tu ideju tako snažno o tome što znači Mesija. They knew the Messiah was going to come and lead them uh, in, in a military victory over the Romans and rule from Jerusalem as a, as a, as a powerful king. Mislili su da će Mesija doći i osloboditi ih od Rimljana i iz Jeruzalema vladati kao jedan snažan kralj. So if he had said that, to što bi značilo da, da je on to rekao za sebe people wouldn't have heard anything else that he has to say ljudi ne bi htjeli poslušati ništa drugo što je on htio reći do, do you know though he did tell one person that he was the messiah uh, zna, a znate za, da je zapravo Isus rekao jednoj osobi da je on mesija anybody can you don't have to answer there's one person he said i who am speaking to you am he ja sam taj koji s tobom razgovara sa marijanka sa marijanka Notice she's not Jewish. Primijetite da ona nije židovka. She doesn't have this strong idea of the Messiah. Ona nema tu snažnu ideju o Mesiji. So when Jesus is outside of that Jewish context, dakle, kada Isus izvan tog židovskog konteksta, he clearly said, I am the Messiah. On jasno kaže, ja sam Mesija. So, now, so Israel is being ruled by the Romans in this time. Dakle, u tom razdoblju Izraelom vladaju Rimljani. They're expecting a Messiah. Očekuju da dođe Mesija. And um, another thing to, to know is when we look at... Uh, okay, Israel in this time was not a dry uh, and barren and empty land. U to doba Izrael nije bio jedna prazna, suha, neplodna zemlja. It was it was green. Dakle, to je bilo jedno zeleno područje. It was fairly well off. I bilo im je prilično dobro. It was, za život. It was cosmopolitan. 
to je bilo jedno kozmopolitsko područje. Um, there was a, there was a lot of trade passed through there. Kroz to područje prolazilo je mnogo trgovine. Um, in fact, Jewish ideas were known in other parts of the world. I zapravo su te židovske ideje bile poznate u drugim dijelovima svijeta. Israel was not some backwater place of just some some uh, villages and things. Izrael nije bio neka zabit sa nekim selima ili neš, nečim sličnim. In fact, do you know the idea of spirit? Znate, samo već ideja duha. Meaning non-material existence. Dakle, jednog nematerijalnog oblika postojanja. Is a Jewish idea. Je židovska ideja. The Greek philosophers took that idea. Grčki filozofi uzeli su tu ideju. From the Jews. Od židova. They before that they thought that the gods and things were made of material substance. A prije toga mislili su da su bogovi sve ostale učinjeni od materije. So that's just that's just some pr- evidence an example to show that Jews were really part of the empire and the social life of of that time. To je primjer da su Židovi bili dakle dio tog jednog života u carstvu. That temple in the temple in Jerusalem that Herod had built where Jesus walked a hram u Jeruzalemu koji je sagradio Herod u kojem je Isus hodao it was big taj hram je bio velik even the romans were impressed with this thing po njima su bili impresionirani čak i rimljani and in fact the, some of the stones are as large as this room zapravo neki od kamenova koji su tamo urađeni su veliki poput ove prostorije and uh, and it was made faced with white marble i bio je obložen bijelim mramorom. And when the when the sun would rise and shine on it. I kad bi sunce izašlo i obasjalo ga. It would blind you. Uh, bilo bile biste zaslijepljeni. Glorious. Bilo je to veličanstvo. Well, in this in this temple, u tom hramu, it was it were the priests that ruled it. Bili su svećenici koji su vladali nad njim. Um now this is a trend this is transitioning to telling you about the various groups we hear about in the, in the Bible. Prijelaz, gdje vam želim ispričati koje sve skupine ljudi susreće, susrećemo u Bibliji. You know, do you know, you, you've heard of the Pharisees. Čuli ste right? za farizeje. You've heard of the Sadducees. Za Saduceje. And there's priests. I tu su bili i svećenici. And there's scribes. Bili su tu i pismoznanci. And there's Herodians. Bili su tu Hero, Hero, Herodijevci. And there's sinners. Bili su tu grešnici. Uh, they were, these are titles or for groups of people that you see. To su sve naslovi titule ljudi koje vidimo. So, so um, starting out, the the priests were Sadducees. Dakle, krenemo od toga da su svećenici bili Saduceji. Um, the Sadducees, you, you, if you, as you read, you'll notice that Jesus didn't deal with the Sadducees very much. I ako čitate, vidjet ćete da Isus se nije puno bavio Saducejima. We hear about them. Čujemo za njih, but they don't really show up in the stories. Ali ne pojavljuju se baš u pričama. Uh, the Sadducees is because the Sadducees lived mainly in Jerusalem. To je bilo zato jer su Saduceji živjeli uglavnom u Jeruzalemu. And they were rich. Bili su bogati. And powerful. Bili su moćni. And they were not interested in having people join their group. I nije ih zanimalo to da ljudi se pridruže njihovoj skupini njima. Um, in fact, you really couldn't become a Sadducee. Zapravo niste ni mogli postati Saduceji. But the priests were Sadducees. Nego svećenici su bili Saduceji. And with the, the Sadducees, what made them different from other Jews, i Saduceji su bili različiti od ostalih židova, is on the one hand, they, they had a lot of contact with the Greek and Roman world. Jer s jedne strane imali su jako puno kontakta sa grčkim i rimskim svijetom. And so they accepted a lot of Greek and Roman ideas. I tako su prihvatili mnoge rimske i grčke ideje. Well, the problem is that these ideas conflict with a lot of what you read in, in the Old Testament. Ali problem je u tome što te ideje u na mnogo mjesta su protu, se protu, suprotstavljaju onima što čitate u Starom Zavjetu. Like resurrection. Na primjer tema uskrsnuća. To, to the, the Greeks and the Romans, the idea that a body would come back to life was stupid. Jer za Grke i Dimljane ideja da bi mrtvo tijelo moglo oživjeti bila je glupost. They, they, they say this material world is evil and bad. I govorili su ovaj materijalan svijet je loš i zao. Why would a, a God ever want to return somebody to this evil place? Zašto bi Bog ikada učinio to da se netko vrati na ovo zlo mjesto? So the Sadducees said only 
the first five books of the Bible, the books of Moses, are the Bible. Zato su sad u C rekli da samo prvih pet knjiga Biblije, dakle prvih pet prvih Mojsijevih knjiga su Biblija. And then there is no mention of resurrection in those books. A u tim knjigama ne spominje se uskrsnuće. And there's a lot of things that, that, that are part of, of the theology of the time that they could reject. I mnoge teološke teme iz tog vremena su oni odbi, odbacivali. Um, and this was very convenient for them. I njima je to bilo jako praktično. Because then they could accept a lot of Greek ideas. Jer su onda mogli isto vremeno prihvatiti mnoge grčke ideje. Well, Against the Sadducees were the Pharisees. Nasuprot Saduceja bili su Farizeji. The Pharisees were far more numerous. Farizeja je bilo mnogo više, bili su mnogo brojni. And they lived among the people. I živjeli su onako među ljudima, među narodom. Uh, and we, we, where, wherever you found Jews, you'd find Pharisees. Gdje god biste našli židove, tamo biste našli Farizeje. And the Pharisees were strict followers of the Jewish Bible. A farizeji su bili strogi sljedbenici židovske Biblije. They were serious Bible people. Oni su bili dakle ozbiljni ljudi Biblije. They, they read their Bibles. Čitali su svoje Biblije. They knew their Bibles. Poznavali su svoje Biblije. They organized their whole life around their Bibles. Sa, sav svoj život organizirali su oko Biblije. And from reading the Gospels we can get the idea that they were hypocritical and mean and, and people. I iz čitanja Biblije možemo steći dojam da su oni bili licemjeri i da su bili zli. Like we, I grew up thinking that Pharisees were obvious frauds. Ja sam odrastao sa tom mišlju da su farizeji bili očiti prevaranti. And that the, the, the kind of person who really was just there to, to get people's money or that, that kind of a thing. To su oni ljudi koji su tu koji samo hoće novce izvući od vas i tako. This is totally wrong. I to je, ali to je potpuno krivo. The Pharisees were nice people. Farizeji su bili dobri ljudi. The Pharisees were your good neighbors. Farizeji bi bili dobri susjedi. Pharisees were the um were the people that everybody looked up to. Farizeji su bili ljudi koje bi u kojima bi ljudi vidjeli uzor. Uh, and not because um like there's some sort of um televangelist who's faking, you know, pre- pretending to be good. I to ne zato jer su oni bili poput ovih teleevangelista koji se prave da su dobri. Um, instead because they actually did, you, you, you watch their lives and they don't do, they, they basically do um, fulfill the laws that God said. Nego zato jer su živjeli ono što su govorili i zato što su u osnovi činili ono što zakon nalaže. And they were respectable people. I bili su ljudi od poštovanja koje se moglo poštovati. Now, We'll, get, we'll be hearing more about the Pharisees. Um, and but you also hear about the the scribes, scribes and Pharisees. Ali čitamo i o isto tako i o pismoznancima, pismoznancima i farizejima. Or lawyers and Pharisees. Ili poznavateljima zakona i farizejima. Now those those scribes and lawyers. Dakle, ti pismoznanci ili zakonoznanci were mostly also Pharisees. Bili su također većinom farizeji. It's just that a Pharisee was an ordinary person. Jer uh, farizeji su dakle inače bili obični ljudi. That would be a Pharisee, a Pharisee would be like a, a person who comes to church here who is very interested in the faith. Farizej bi bio netko tko na primjer redovito dolazi u crkvu i tko je jako zainteresiran za vjeru. And and he, you know, He reads books. I osoba koja čita knjige. Um, and knows knows the Bible well. Koja dobro poznaje Bibliju. But the the lawyer is or in the the scribe they're like the professors of theology. Ali pismoznanci bili su poput profesora teologije. So when Jesus is dealing with Pharisees, he's dealing with sort of local local synagogue leaders. Dakle kada je Isus u interakciji sa farizejima, onda je u interakciji sa običnim lokalnim voditeljima sinagoge. And when he's dealing with a with a, a scribe or a lawyer, he's talking about the the people who knew not just what the what is written, but all the things that have been written about what's been written. Ali kada govorimo o interakciji sa pismoznancima, onda znači on razgovara sa ljudima koji znaju ne samo ono što je napisano, nego zna što je napisano onome što je napisano. Okay, then you have a group called the Herodians. Onda su tu i Herodijovci. Herod, kako se kaže? 
Herodovci. 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 Tako je. But they're they're only they only are mentioned a few times. Ali oni se spominju samo nekoliko puta. You can probably guess Možete what they are. Možete pretpostaviti o kome se radi. They're supporters of Herod and Herod's children. They're they're more politically interested than spiritually interested. Dakle, njih više zanima politička strana nego vjerska strana. Oni podržavaju Heroda i njegovu djecu. Then you also have sinners. A onda isto tako imamo i grešnike. Because the Pharisees will say, Jesus, he eats with sinners. I farizeji su govorili, a ta Isus sjede s grešnicima. Oh, on one level, of course, aren't we all sinners? Naravno, s jedne strane, svi smo grešnici. But what they mean is, uh, the sinners were Jews that did not take the Jewish religious system seriously. Ali oni su mislili pod grešnicima ljude koji nisu ozbiljno shvaćali židovsku religiju. They, they did not use the temple system to deal with their sin. Nisu koristili hramski sustav da bi se odnosili prema svojim grijesima. Maybe they would go to synagogue sometimes. Možda bi tu i tamo otišli u sinagogu. But they were kind of, they, they weren't really religiously involved. Ali nisu bili uključeni u vjerski život. And this, this was not okay. I to nije bilo dobro. Uh, it, the, the, the Pharisees knew that, that the Jewish nation needs to be faithful to the Lord. Farizeji su znali da židovski narod mora biti vjeran gospodinu. So, they, they look at these people who, who don't care about the Lord. Zato su gledali u te ljude koje nije briga za gospodina. And they did what they could to keep those people from having influence in society. I trudili su se da ti ljudi što manje utječu na društvo. And so... They didn't know why Jesus would would associate with these people. I nisu znali zašto se Isus druži s tim ljudima. Yeah. Um, of course, you have all around this common people. Naravno, oko svega toga imate i obične ljude. And the common people were kind of, look, they're not hated by everybody, but they were despised by everybody. A i te obične ljude nije baš da su ih mrzili, nego su ih ovi ostali prezirali. I mean, the, the Pharisees and these people thought of them as They're okay. Farizeji svi ovi ostali mislili su za te obične ljude, a u redu su. But they're not like us. Ali nisu poput nas. They could be like us. Mogli bi biti poput nas. If they would get serious. Uh, kad bi se ozbiljili. And of course the Sadducees are wealthy and proud. Naravno, Saduceji su bogati i ponosni. So nobody really cared that much about the common people. I zato oni nisu puno brinuli za obične ljude. Ex- except to bring them into my into my group. Ali, a ostali su ih htjeli privući u svoju skupinu. Now the last one which is not mentioned in the Bible but I think is important for us to know about. I zadnja skupina koja se ne spomenje u Bibliji ali nama je važno da znamo za nju. Especially because I'm about to make a point from this. Posebno zato jer ću imati jednu poantu koju želim reći. And there's a group called the Essenes. To su skupina koja se zove Essen. We, we know about them because we have found many things that they wrote. Znamo za njih jer su pronađene brojne stvari koje su oni napisali. I said that the Pharisees were the ones who were most serious about the Bible. Rekao sam da su farizeji bili oni koji su bili najozbiljniji što se tiče Biblije. But the Essenes might actually be even more serious. Ali Eseni su možda bili čak i ozbiljniji. And the Essenes were, were people who saw that the temple was run by corrupt Sadducees. I ti jeseni su smatrali da hramom, hram vode, dakle ti korumpirani Saduceji. And they said, I will have nothing to do with you corrupt, you have, cor- you have corrupted God's system. I rekli su, nećemo imati veze sa tim pokvarenim sustavom, sustavom Božim koji ste vi pokvarili. I'm go- we're going to withdraw from this corrupt society. Povući ćemo se od tog pokvarenog društva. And we're going to live separately and be pure. And keep that in mind as I make this point. Jesus came into this world, right? Which, which I just explained, it described. And you had the... Did he seek out the most powerful and influential people? te najmoćnije i najutjecajnije ljude. The, the, the Sadducees. Saduceje. No. Did they seek no. him? Jesu li oni tražili njega? No. Did no. he seek out the most biblical people? Je li on tražio te najbiblijskije ljude? 
Yeah, halfway, but not not particularly. Onako napolali, ne baš konkretno. We can say how did they do with Jesus? Uh, možemo se pitati kako su se oni odnosili prema Isusu. Those Pharisees, what did they think of Jesus? Ti farizeji, što su oni mislili o Isusu? They didn't like Jesus. Nijem se svidio Isus. But they're the Bible people. Ali to su ljudi Biblije. But they missed Jesus when he came. Ali nekako im je promakao Isus kad je on došao. And how about the Essenes, the purest people? A što sa Essenima, tim najčišćim ljudima? Did Jesus go out to them to seek out his real people that had kept themselves pure? Je li Isus izašao da bi tražio te najčišće ljude koji su se čuvali da budu čisti? No. Ne. They missed him entirely. They missed him so much that they're not even mentioned in the Bible at all. And they're off being proud of how pure they are and how much God loves them more than other people. But they missed him when he came among them. And the Pharisees were so busy and with the Bible, se Biblijom, and and had so much of their faith based on their understanding of the Bible, I su svoju na tom svom Biblije, and the fact that they know they're okay, I na to da su da su oni u redu, because they do all, all the good things God wants them to do. Zato jer čine sve one dobre stvari koje Bog želi od njih da ih oni čine. Then I know they know for sure that God likes them. I oni sigurno znaju da ih Bog voli. And most of them also missed Jesus. I većina njih također njima je isto tako promaš, da su promašili su Isusa, promakao im je Isus. Uh, he he offended them. On ih je na neki način uvrijedio. He he um scared them. On ih je uplašio. Because he threatened the things that they had built their security and certainty on. Jer je bio prijetnja tim stvarima na kojima su oni gradili svoju sigurnost. Um, but we have to be fair to the Pharisees. Ali trebamo biti fair prema farizejima. Not all the Pharisees missed Jesus. Nije Isus promakao svim farizejima. Now the group that responded to Jesus the most was the common people. Dakle, skupina ljudi koja je naj, naj, najviše reagirala na Isusa bili su ti obični ljudi. And the sinners. I grešnici. Now after that though, the group that had some positive impact was the Pharisees. I nakon njih je skupina koja je barem malo pozitivno reagirala bili su upravo farizeji. Some Pharisees did follow Jesus. Neki farizeji su slijedili Isusa. So, so that, that, um, that is the, the background of who these groups are to in the Bible. To je ta pozadina, tko su te skupine u Bibliji? Now, the next thing I'm going to do is talk briefly about the four Gospels. Sljedeće, kratko ću govoriti o četiri evanđelja. Um, I assume you know there are Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Pretpostavljam da znate da imamo Mateja, Marka, Luku i Ivana. And Matthew, Mark, and Luke are Mate, similar to each Mate, other. Mateja, Marko i Luka su slični međusobno. And John is different. A Ivan je različit. Matthew, Mark and Luke, we call them the, the synoptic gospels. Mateja, Marka i Luku nazivamo sinoptička evanđelja. And that comes from Latin. And it means you sin like the same viewpoint, optica. Latin or Greek? Uh, is it I think is it is it Greek? I thought it was Latin. Greek. Yeah. He thinks it's Greek. I think it is. It could Greek. be it could be Greek. It could be Latin. It's a classical language. Latinski ili grčki, dakle za nešto što je slično. Optica, optica. I thought that was Latin, but I knew, it could be you're wrong. I don't know Latin. Okay. Ne znam latinski možda. Okay. Now the the um but it means you see the, the seeing from the same point of view. Dakle nešto što se gleda iz istog kuta. And so um that's why the three of them have a lot in common. Zato ta tri evanđelja imaju mnogo toga zajedničkog. They focus on Jesus's ministry in the region of Galilee. I fokusiraju se na Isusovu službu u Galileji. And they focus on the kingdom of God. I fokusiraju se na kraljevstvo Božje. And they were all written much bef- long before John was written. I napisana su sva tri, dakle, mnogo prije nego što je napisano Ivanovo evanđelje. John was written decades after. 
Ivan je napisao svoje evanđelje desetljećima nakon ta prva tri evanđelja. And in, in, a, in a later on I'll, I'll, I'll explain why that's important to know. I kasnije ću objasniti zašto je to važno znati. But each of these three gospels has each gospel writer is telling the story of Jesus. Ali svaki od ta tri pisca evanđelja govori priču o Isusu. And each has his own sort of angle. I svaki ima neki svoj kut gledanja. Each one has is is trying to make a slightly different point about Jesus. I svatko od njih želi staviti jedan malo drugačiji naglasak na Isusa. So and and if you study them side by side you can see this proučavate ono jedno do drugoga to možete vidjeti although that studying the you know Matthew Mark and Luke side by side is a fairly advanced kind of thing to do ono to što me što je proučavanje Matija Marka i Luke jednog do drugog je prilično napredan but but ljudi proučavanje but you you can notice things like ali možete primijetiti stvari poput Mark has not does not have as many stories as Luke or Matthew. U Marku nema toliko priča kao što ima što ih ima u Mateju i u Luki. But the stories Mark has are longer than the stories in Matthew and Luke. Ali priče koje nalazimo u Marku su duže od onih priča koje nalazimo u Mateju i Luki. If you look p- pick a story the, the 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 calming of the the stilling of the storm or the feeding of the 5000 Odaberite priču, recimo, od stišavanje oluje ili hranjenje 5000 ljudi. Um, read them in the different gospels. Pročitajte ih u različitim evanđeljima. Mark will have the most detail. U Marku ćete naći najviše detalja. So, that's just, that's an example of how it's not that there's a whole bunch of stories and they get shaken up and dumped out on the page. I dakle, nije da su priče ono uzete, da su sve promučkane i onda su naprosto bačene na stranice. Each author was, had his had a purpose and was careful. Svaki od tih pisaca imao je svoju svrhu i bio je pažljiv u onome što piše. And um and you can see for for, uh, for example Na primjer možete vidjeti no, Not to steal Ivan's thunder later or steal this. Ne, his ne želim krasti Ivanovo <laughs> ideje koje će podijeliti no. s nama. But for example, Mark focuses on the failure of the disciples. Na primjer Marko se usredotočava na te promašaje koje su činili učenici. Um, much more than the other two. Mnogo više od ove dvojice ostalih. They don't do anything good in the barely do anything good in the in the book of Mark. U Marku jedva da išta oni čine dobro. And and that's on purpose. I to je sa svrhom. Because it focuses on Jesus. Je fokus je na Isusu. It's not that you have to be super. Ne radi se o tome da vi morate biti super. It's because he's super. Jer je on super. Um so that is what what uh, why you have the, the synoptic gospels and then John. Have... Zato imamo dakle ta sinoptička evanđelja i Ivanova evanđelja. And what I'm going to be doing is talking mostly about what Jesus the rest of my time will be what Jesus says in the synoptic gospels. I u većinu vremena posvetit ću tome što Isus govori u sinoptičkim evanđeljima. And I'm going to leave John to Ivan. I a onda ću Ivana prepustiti Ivan. Ivan. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to talk now about what was it, what was Jesus' teaching. Govorit ću dakle o tome kakav je bio Isusov nauk. What was it that Jesus was saying when he was Što walking around on earth? Što je govorio dok je hodao na ovome svijetu? Is it possible to summarize it? Je li moguće to sažiti nekako? Because I, I tell you, um, Jesus, like I said before, can be hard to understand. Jer kao što sam vam rekao, može biti teško razumijeti Isusa. Uh, in fact, I've said several times in a completely humorous way. I više puta sam rekao u, na potpuno jedan humorističan način. That I understand the Christianity just fine. Da kršćanstvo prilično dobro razumijem. Except for this Jesus guy. Jedno ne razumijem tog Isusa. Um, he's the most mysterious, the hardest to understand. On je onako tajanstven, najteže ga je razumijeti. Um, and some of the reason is, uh, is that he deliberately said some things that were hard to understand. A jedan od razloga za to je što je on namjerno rekao neke stvari koje je teško razumijeti. It said he did not teach without using parables. I kaže na primjer da on nije poučavao bez usporedbi. Um, but a, a pro, we have another problem. A mi imamo još jedan problem. Is that we in European Christianity. Da mi u ovom europskom kršćanstvu. And that includes America and all of that. 
you know, the whole thing, Protestantism and, and, and the whole world. Ali to uključuje i Ameriku i protestantizam i sve ostalo. Um, have developed a habit da smo mi tu razvili jednu naviku of starting with the Apostle Paul. Da, krećemo od apostola Pavla. And then we end up reading Jesus through the glasses of Paul. A onda čitamo Isusa kroz naočale Pavla. We forget that Paul was a student of Jesus. Mi zaboravljamo da je Pavao proučavao Isusa. Uh, no, not when Jesus was before his, you know, when he was living among us on earth. Ne da je bio njegov učenik u smislu da, dok je, da je bio s njim dok je Isus bio na ovome svijetu. But the after Paul trusted in Christ, he learned what Jesus had taught. Nego nakon što je Pavao prihvatio Isusa, on je proučavao što je Isus naučavao. We know that because he, he quotes Jesus and things. Mi to znamo jer on citira Isusa. So, Paul would expect us to read what he writes through the glasses of Jesus. Pavo, dakle, očekuje da mi čitamo ono što on piše kroz Isusove naučale. So, we're going to talk about um, what it was that Jesus had to say. Dakle, proučavat ćemo što je Isus htio reći. Okay, first, Matthew, Prvo, Matej, um, chapter 4, verse 17. Matej 4, 17. Now, in each one of the Gospels, there is a place where the Gospel writer starts Jesus' teaching ministry. U svakom evanđelju postoji mjesto u kojem evanđelist počinje sa Isusovom, dakle, službom poučavanja. And in each one of these places... I na svakome od tih mjesta we can see that he focuses on the center of Jesus' message. Vidimo da se usredotočava na središte Isusove poruke. So, dakle, u Mateju 4.4.17 U Mateju 4.17 What does it say? Vidimo, kaže, Isus, ota da Isus poče propovjedati i govoriti pokajte se jer približilo se kraljevstvo nebesko. Ok, now, let's look at Mark. Pogledajmo onda u Marka. Uh, Mark 1. Marka 1. Uh, Mark 1. And then 14 and 15. Marko 1, 14 i 15. A nakon što Ivan bijaše predan, pođe, dođe Isus u Galileju propovjedajući evanđelje o kraljevstvu Božje i govoreći Ispunjeno se vrijeme i približilo se kraljevstvo Božje. Pokajte se i vjerujte evanđelju. Now, notice that that what Math, Mark says is longer than Matthew's. Primijetite right? da ovo što kaže Marko je duže od onoga što kaže Matej. It's a pattern you'll see. To je taj uzorak koji ćete primijetiti. The he says the time was fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Kaže ispunjelo se vrijeme i približilo se kraljevstvo Božje. He's what he he is saying that the kingdom of God is near. Želi reći da je kraljevstvo Božje blizu. And he says, repent. Kaže, pokajte se. Notice he doesn't say rejoice. Ne kaže, radujte se. Because in order to participate in the kingdom, we, we have to, it's not automatic. Jer da biste sudjelovi u tom kraljevstvu, nije to nešto automatski. We, we, and we humans are naturally inclined away from participating in God's work. Jer mi ljudi smo po svoje naravi se suprotstavljamo Božjem dijelu. We have to repent. Moramo se pokajati, obratiti se. We have to let go of things, some things. Moramo ostaviti neke stvari. Um, if you're going to be trusting um, in Jesus, ako želite se pouzdati u Isusa, vjerovati Isusu, then that means you have to, you're stopping trusting other things. Onda to znači da prestajete se pouzdavati u neke druge stvari. So that's why he says repent. I zato kaže pokajte se. Now, We're gonna, I'll go to Luke in a minute. Ćemo za na Luku. Um, what he's talking about here a ovdje, Marko, is the kingdom of God. O Božje. Now, what is the kingdom of God? A što je to Božje? The kingdom of God is, had, had become, in, by, by the time of Jesus, among the Jews, Kraljevstvo Božje je u vrijeme Isusovo vrijeme među židovima had become this the idea of what had been promised before 
je postalo ta ideja o onome što je bilo prije obećano. Remember that God had told them that when they come back from the exile, everything is going to be fine. Sjetite se da im je Bog rekao da nakon što se vrate iz izgnanstva da će sve biti u redu. That the, the there will be no fear. Da neće biti više straha. That you'll always have enough, you'll be blessed. Da će uvijek imati dovoljno, da će biti blagoslovljeni. That um that everything's going to be great. Da će sve biti super. <laughs> that the world will work exactly as it should work. I da svijet će funkcionirati upravo tako kako treba funkcionirati. And that is what is like when God rules. I a tako je kada je Bog na vlast. So that's the kingdom of God. To je dakle kraljevstvo Božje. That's what people were expecting. To su ljudi očekivali. And people were expecting that it would come through force. I ljudi su očekivali da će to doći silom. And Jesus came and said the kingdom of God is here. It's near. And he's not saying it's going to come soon. He says in Luke, the kingdom of God is among you. Present tense. Is among you. So he's not only talking about a future event. Dakle, ne govori samo o nekom budućem događaju. And so, um, we'll come back to the kingdom of God. I tako vratit ćemo se na kraljevstvo Božje. Because it's extremely important. Zato je to jako važno. And we go to Luke. I preći ćemo sada na Luku. In Luke, u Luki, chapter 4. U četvrtom poglavlju. He goes to his hometown of Nazareth. Isus odlazi u svoj rodni grad Nazaret. And they hand him um, the book of Isaiah to read from. I dali su mu Izajenu knjigu da iz nje čita. And he found he found the place the passage he wanted to read. I on je pronašao dakle on je pronašao odlomak koji želi pročitati. And then we can read verse 18 which is what he is Jesus is reading starting in verse 18 and then you can read to 21. Čitamo iz četvrtog poglavlja 18. redak, to je ono što je Isus pročitao do 21. Kaže: "Duh Gospodnji na meni je, jer me pomaza, da navještam evanđelje siromasima. Posla me da iscijelim one srca slomljena, da proglasim sužnjima oslobođenje i slijepima vraćanje vida. Da na slobodu pustim potlačene, da proglasim godinu prihvaćanja Gospodnjega. I savi knjigu vrati je poslužitelju i sjede." I oči svi u sinagogi bijahu uprte u njega. A on im poče govoriti, danas se na vaše uši ispuni ovo pismo. And so, what, what Luke, you can see, has a little different introduction to Jesus' teaching ministry. Kao što vidite, Luka ima malo drugačiji uvod u Isusovu službu poučavanja. But, I'm going to show that what Luke has here is the same message as what Mark and Matthew list. Ali pokazat ću vam da je ovo što Luka ovdje piše ista stvar što su naveli i Matej i Marko. He says that, notice at the end it says he's proclaiming the favorable year of the Lord. Kaže na kraju dakle da proglasim godinu prihvaćanja gospodnjega. Which is not necessarily, not a literal year. Što naravno nije nužno doslovno godina. But he, this is the time period of God's favor nego da je to dakle jedno razdoblje Bože naklonjenosti. Which by the way is our message to the world to this day. Što right? je usput rečeno naša poruka svijetu danas. We go out and we proclaim the favorable year of the Lord. Izlazimo i navještamo dakle godinu to, te Bože naklonjenosti. That he he is freely available come to Jesus um uh his this is the time of his favor. Da je on dostupan svima, dođite k Isusu, ovo je to vaše razdoblje prihvaćanja. But um this at the end is talking about an Old Testament concept called the year of jubilee. I ovdje, ovdje zapravo govori o tom starozavjetnom konceptu, uh, dakle jubilarne godine. Now, the year of jubilee was something in the law of Moses. Ta jubilarna godina je nešto što dolazi iz Mojsijevog zakona. The every 50th year, što bi bila svaka 50ta godina, was to be a year of freedom. To je trebala biti godina slobode, oslobođenja. Uh, that means all debts were forgiven. To znači da su se svi dugovi opraštali. All slaves were freed. Da su se svi robovi oslobađali. And 
Um, and nobody was to work. I da nitko nije smio raditi. Even the land was to have a rest. Čak i zemlja je trebala odmarati. And the Lord promised that he would take care of them. I gospodin je obećao da će se brinuti za njih. That there will be enough food even without them working the land. Da će biti dovoljno hrane bez, bez toga da oni rade na zemlji. Can you imagine what it would do to our financial system if every 50th year all debts were forgiven? Možete li zamisliti što bi se dogodilo, dogodilo našem financijskom sustavu kad bi se svake 50. godine opraštali svi dugovi? Yeah, God did not design the system that we have today. And in fact, part of the year of Jubilee is that every family's land would return back to that family. So, and this is extended families. These big extended families would own these chunk, these land together. And in over time, you know, we know that sometimes you have some rough years. And a whole family can really suffer financially. And they're forced to sell off some of this land. Well, the land for them is the source of, 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 of income. A za njih je zemlja izvor prihoda. It is the equivalent of having a business or having investments to je today. To isto kao da danas imate svoj prihod, da imate danas investicije. And so some families will end up, could end up in total poverty with nothing. I tako su neke obitelje mogli završiti u potpuno siromaštvu, nisu imale ništa. So God said, I onda je Bog rekao, Every 50th year, it all goes back. Sve se vraća. Your, you know, it doesn't matter what's happened to your family over those 50 years. You get it all back. And, and this is because God wanted his people to know the kind of world that he wants it to be. He wants us to know what it's like to be with God. That's forgiven. Opraštaju se dugovi. No slavery. Slaves, slavery ended. Uh, robstvo prestaje. Um, and, and whatever has happened in the past, just forget that. I sve što se dogodilo u prošlosti, naprosto zaboravite to. Um, and so that is what Jesus came and he says, this is the proclamation of the favorable year of the Lord. I onda Isus došao i rekao da je to navještanje, dakle, te godine prihvaćanja gospodnje. And this is another way of talking about the kingdom of God. I to je još jedan od načina na koji se govori o kraljevstvu Božjem. The kingdom of God is uh, characterized by things working the way they should. I kraljevstvo Božje okarakterizirano je time da stvari funkcioniraju na način kako bi trebale funkcionirati. And so, the, um, and, and notice, well, I opazite no. sljedeće. Actually, not a good time to start that. Um, but so he he proclaims this favorable year of the Lord. Dakle, on najavljuje tu ili proglašava godinu prihvaćanja Gospodnjeg, Bože naklonosti. And this is the same thing as his proclaiming the kingdom of God as a present reality. I to je isto kao da navješta kraljevstvo Božje kao sadašnju stvarnost. Now Kingdom of God as a present reality is what I'm going to talk about after the break. I think Nakon we take a break. Ću, dakle, o Božjim kao okay. Pauza. Pauza. Mm-hmm.